Welcome to Freedom Life Center. We're so glad that you tuned in today, and we're glad you tuned into this, this television station. We're very grateful today to have the opportunity to bring you this message today from Freedom Life Center. And we pray and trust that it will be a blessing unto you. Now let's go into the service already in progress today. God bless you. I want everybody to do something for me. How many of you agree that the presence of God is what it's all about? Yeah. When you live and walk and, and have the divine presence of God in your life, total, complete change takes place. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. Say, no weapon, no weapon. formed against us against shall us. prosper. Shall Say, every tongue every that tongue. rises up rises against, against us against in judgment shall be condemned. For our righteousness is of the Lord. Now give the Lord a good shout of victory. You give that an outside of the God of the Lord. I said there's victory in this house and here's God. One of these days we get an opportunity, I'm going to minister when the opportunity comes, on what shouting and clapping actually does. I did a study on that. And people were blown away. How many of you would like to know how to put the devil on the run? Come on. How many of you recognize you have dominion and authority over all devils? Somebody shout out to you. I was so glad when he said about preaching on the baptism because it's fine for me to preach on the baptism because when you preach on the baptism of the Holy Ghost and believe it, people get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now some of you got nervous already. Some people say, I don't know about this tongue stuff. I'm not sure about tongues. Now, I, I'm all right with being filled with the Spirit of God. But I don't know about this tongue stuff. Well, let me tell you something. They're a package deal. I said they come in a package deal. All you got to do is read your Bible. When they all were filled with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, I know there's a lot of churches tell you, you don't need the baptism. I'm here to tell you, it is vital. It is an absolute Number one priority that you receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire because that's the power of God that calls you to be a witness. I can't hear you now. I said it'll help you be a witness like you've never been. Now we're going to take a little time. I don't normally do this. If some of the couple guys can grab that table and just bring it over here. I hardly ever, I don't know, and Angela was in the ministry before. I pastored. All I know is how to preach. I'll just be honest with you. People say, well, can you work on a car? No. Can you do anything up? No, not much of anything. I can preach, though. How many of you know that? That's all I've done for 20 years is preach. Yeah. Some of you may have been a mechanic. That's all you've ever done. Well, that's what you do. How many of you realize God anoints you to do whatever you are? Every gift is different. My gift is different than the pastor's. That's why you need the fivefold ministry. Right. You might have a teacher that gets up here and teaches very quietly and so on. I'm going to do my best to teach you today, son. And if I get a little out of hand, then you'll know that that's just the preach. It's just, it just hard, isn't it hard to hold in? Amen? How many of you glad that the truth is preached in this church? Now you go a lot of places that like, yeah that's right, you go a lot of places like a dry cleaning service, you're in by 11, out by 12. Huh? They don't want to make anybody mad, they don't want to say anything to stir any trouble up. I'm here to stir you up today. I'm here to stir up the gift of God on the inside of you. So you overflow with the power of God. And God's anointing is absolutely irrelevant in your life. Come on. Jesus. So we're going to go slow. I'm using one of these. Pastor said he had to start a gift. But I've been using these. Uh, uh, we call them. We're going to start out in Matthew chapter 3. But first we're going to do this. Lift your hands up to God right now. Amen. Say, Father. I desire, I desire everything you have for me. I choose, I choose to receive today, today everything, everything that causes me to be a more powerful witness, to see signs, wonders, and miracles follow me. Say, I believe your word. I receive your word. And your word changes me. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the glory. And we thank you for the outpouring. In Jesus' name. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say amen. Now if you have a Bible, open your Bible to Matthew chapter 3. We're going to lay a little foundation and then I'm going to, I'm going to share some things.
things with you, the little nuggets and little bunny trails. You ever gone on a bunny trail? Pastor will say, well, we're going to take a little bunny trail here. And you do do bunny trails. You take off on something. You, God gives you revelation. Everybody say revelation. Revelation, <laughs> revelation knowledge is what you do. Head knowledge is not. You get head knowledge, it won't give you victory. It's when revelation, the Spirit of God, uncovers truth and opens up the Word to you to where you're reading. How many of you have been reading the Bible and all of a sudden something leaped off the page yeah. and you've never seen it before right. and it speaks directly to you? Yeah. Now it may be, and I call it revelation application, but it may be talking about something entirely different, but revelation application is where God by the Holy Spirit takes the cover off and says, I'm talking right to you and I'm giving you a revelation right now. Everybody say revelation. revelation. Well, today hopefully you'll receive revelation now. Now I know what you sense it. How many of you sense we needed a breakthrough? I can tell it already. Well, you know why, don't you? Because the devil is a liar and he's trying to stop God from doing what God wants to do. He doesn't want anybody to receive power from on high. He doesn't want anybody to receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost through the evidence of speaking in tongues. He'll make it. How many of you have heard somebody say, well, tongues is of the devil? Have you ever heard a denominational person say, tongues is of the devil? Yeah. Or oh, that passed away. That passed away the, the, with the disciples. That passed away years ago when, when in Acts chapter 2, when that happened, it was over after that. Yeah. Now, have you ever heard of the Holy Ghost passing away? <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I always thought when somebody passed away that the first of kin is not notified, and I wasn't notified, were you? <laughs> he didn't pass away. The Holy Ghost is still here right now. Now some of you, how many of you know Jesus, when he himself received the Spirit of God, he was in the river Jordan being water baptized, the Holy Ghost fell on him, and in the form of a dove, he was filled with the Spirit of God. How many of you know he had the Holy Ghost in his fullness? The Bible says in John chapter 3 that Jesus had the Spirit without measure. That means he had the entirety of the Holy Ghost. You say, what about me? Well, little devil will do no, because on, on the day of Pentecost, that the what? They were distributed. The Holy Ghost was distributed when tongues of fire fell upon individuals. Yeah. We're going to lay some stuff out today. You're going to go, wow, I never saw that before. Amen. How many of you ready? Yeah. Look at Matthew Amen. chapter 3 with me. We're just going to look at two scriptures there, and then we're going to go and jump a couple other places, and we're going to talk about benefits of the baptism. Come on, Somebody say benefits of the baptism. Benefits of the baptism. <laughs> You understand there's a purpose. Our purpose says for the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Yes. He doesn't just fill you with the Holy Ghost and overflowing in order for you to feel real good. Now, I appreciate what the pastor said. But how many of you know, honestly, and we love feeling God. How many of you love feeling God? You love to feel the presence of God, no question. But you can't live by your feelings. Because if you live by your feelings, what will happen is one day you get up and feel like you're not married or you're not saved. How many of you know if you wake up tomorrow and you feel like you're not married, you're still married? If you wake up and feel like you're not saved, if you did say, you're still saved. So if we rely on our feelings all the time, we're not having confidence in what God already said. His word is truth, not your feelings. Your feelings are fickle. We're like stock market Christians, I call them. One up one day, down the next. Come on. We should be what? Stabilized, where we are consistent, where we are absolutely constantly the same. That's what it means when you're patient. When you are patient, that means you are constant. Immovable, unshakable. How many of you know we've received a kingdom that cannot be shaken? Right. You're in that kingdom right now. Therefore, if you're in the kingdom that can't be shaken, you cannot be shaken. Right. So when the enemy comes in, everybody puts a comma in the wrong place. When the enemy comes in, hear me now, like a flood, the Spirit of God raises up a standard against him. We read it all. Now, well, when the enemy comes in like a flood, no, no, no. The flood's in you. Rivers of living water on the inside of you. That's what comes forth. Yeah. Carrying your adversary downstream. Somebody else. Yeah. I'm not ready to explore. Yeah. I'm trying to get to my scripture. You know what I'm talking about. You're trying you try to get to, to your foundation. Anybody happy to say amen in the room? Yeah. Yeah, but you don't know what's going on in my life. I've had so much trouble. Listen, Jesus said, in the world you'll have tribulation. Yeah. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Watch this. In the Greek, I'm deprived of the power to harm me. How many of you know that you can walk in a place where the adversary touches you not? That's what 1 John chapter 5 says. Oh, Lord, I'm crying. 1 John chapter 5 says there's a place where he cannot let 
lay hold on you. He can't touch you. How is that? You're anointed and oiled so much with the Holy Ghost that he slipped right through his hands. I'll prove it. They tried to throw Jesus off of a cliff and he walked right through the midst of them. Why? Because he was so oiled up with the anointing of God, they couldn't get a grip on him. Somebody said the devil can't get a grip on him. Glory to God. Now look at that. I'm stirred up. I'll tell you I am. Look at look, I'm trying to get that. Look at Matthew chapter 3. Turn that with me. Or should I say if you have an iPad, go there with me. We're going to go, we're not going to read the whole thing. You know about repentance. Come on. It was preached to you already. How many of you have repented of your sins? Amen. How many of you changed your mind and been born again? Lift your hand away with me. Somebody might say, I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, in order for you to receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost, you've got to be born again. That's right. You have to receive the Spirit of God and become a new species of being that never existed before. You've got a recreated spirit. Everybody say the old things pass away. All becomes new. Oh, so away. when you repent, you become a new creature. Yes. Yes. But we're talking about something else in a little bit here. When you see it, you're going to get it. Where's my table there? It's all right. Look at first, or should I say, Matthew chapter 3. And let's look at verse number 11. Just come down to verse number 11. Amen. Now, remember John the Baptist came out of the wilderness and he didn't look like we think preachers should look. Yeah. No. Huh? Yeah, I mean, he wasn't eating like we think preachers eat. No. We were eating locusts from all time. Yeah. Now, some people used to think that was those bugs that... Shed their skin. How many of you know what how many of you know what August is? Yeah. No, he's talking about a fruit. He's not talking about a bug. Oh, now I know people eat bugs today, don't get me wrong, but he was eating locusts, which was a fruit, and while honey came out of the wilderness, looking like a wild man, preaching what? Repent for the kingdom is at hand. And then he said this. Look at verse eleven. He said, I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And I'll stop there. And with fire. Everybody say fire. Fire. Shout fire. Fire. Notice he didn't say just baptized with the Holy Ghost. But he said fire. Oh. wonder why he said fire. Well, one, one area is what the pastor said a few weeks ago, is you get a passion like you've never had before. Uh, how many of you know the Bible says when you burn with lust, it says you're better to marry than to burn? Well, that means your passion's out of control. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a good passion to have the passion of the Spirit of God operating in you. Yeah. So the fire is talking about passion, but there's another area that the fire, when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, and fire, he purges and burns up, listen to me, all the chaff and things in your life that need to be burned up. Yes, Anybody yes. in here needs something burned up in their life? Oh, yes. And there are people that say, you know, we received the baptism in 1972 and we've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. You know, we can only speak in tongues when the Holy Ghost comes on us. How many of you ever heard that? Though? Well, Paul said, I will pray with my spirit at will. I will sing with my spirit. And I'm a lot like Paul. He said, I pray in tongues more than all of you put together. Now, some people think that Paul was correcting the church concerning the baptism and concerning tongues and the gifts. But in reality, all he was saying was, you need to walk in love when you're functioning in the gifts. Yeah. How many of you know you've got to walk in love? Yes, sir. Yes. How many of you have run some Pentecostals that have, they're kind of like snakes? Hello. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of wickedness going on in the church. I mean, they talk in tongues, but they're wicked. How many of you realize that when you really get the real thing, you are immersed in the supernatural and God's power absolutely covers it, immerses you to where you have the love of God shed abroad in your heart. That's what happened. So he said, you're baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Now, we're going to lay a little foundation here that's going to help you a whole, whole lot, I promise you. Look, if you will, turn to me with, and I'm going to stick by my notes as close as I can. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Jump over there. Luke chapter 24. And look at verse number 49. We're going to see if Jesus was just making a suggestion about the Holy Ghost or if he was making a commandment. Now, don't get confused. I'm not saying you can't go to heaven if you're baptized, not baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's right. I'm not saying that. But I'm going to show you what Scripture teaches about the baptism that you've probably never seen before. I want you to see this. Look at it now. It says over here in, in um, 
Verse 49 of, of Luke 24. And behold, Jesus is talking, it's in red. I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued from on, from, or from, with power from on high. How many of you know Jesus himself said, I will send the Holy Spirit? Yes. Meaning that he had to go back and sit down at the right hand of the Father, give a tag team handoff to the Holy Ghost so the Holy Ghost could come because he had the Spirit without measure. Are you listening? In other words, nobody else had him. That's why when he breathed on the disciples, they got a little taste of what was getting ready to happen. Huh? But nobody else had the Holy Ghost. Jesus went back and said, just wait right there and don't move. How many of you glad they obeyed? Look what it says now. Let's jump over now. We're going to get into this real ahead. Look at Acts chapter 1, verse 2. Acts chapter 1, verse number 2. Now we're just laying a foundation, and this foundation is going to help you better understand how important it is that you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 1, verse number 2. Until the day in which he was taken up, talking about Jesus, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given, everybody say commandments. commandments. Say commandments. commandments. Not suggestions, commandments. He said, giving commandments unto the apostles uh, whom he had chosen. Now jump over to Acts chapter number 1, same chapter, verse 4. And being assembled together, just two scriptures down, being assembled together with them, commanded them, everybody say commanded. commanded. My Lord, we're seeing a lot of commanded here. Commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. He commanded them to wait until what? Until the promise of the Father was sent. Now you know what really honestly is wrong with the church today? We don't understand, honestly, if we did, we'd see more power in manifestation. If we understood the real baptism in the Holy Ghost with fire and we functioned in it properly, you'd see that all through the book of Acts, it was nothing but power evangelism. They were constantly seeing signs, wonders, and miracles. How many of you like to see that kind of move again? Come on. Yes. Amen. It's not a coincidence we're talking about the baptism today since we're getting ready to go out and minister to people. That's right. Because the Holy Ghost, when you're baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire, He will work on the inside of you and you become sensitive. He will give you words of knowledge. The gifts of the Spirit. Understand the baptism is a gateway to the gifts. When you receive the baptism, it's a gateway to the gifts of the Spirit where they function through you. That means you can be between the Cheerios and the green beans at Walmart, see somebody. I've seen people do this. I've done it myself. I'll tell you a story. It'll blow your mind. I myself have seen people walk up to somebody and say, God showed me. Don't even know them from a load of gold. I, I see that God is showing me you have a problem with headaches or you've got a problem with your knee you got a problem with your back or whatever. And they'll just go up and say, can I pray for you? Lay hands on them and see them healed right there in Walmart. That's our problem. We think everything's supposed to happen in here. No. The wind and the power of God blew them out into the streets. And they began to see signs, wonders, and miracles everywhere they went. Come on, somebody help me. This is first. Now, don't get me wrong, I love church, but this is where we get our marching orders. Come on. People come to church and say, well, I just love church because I can feel God and, boy, I feel joy and so No, no, no. This is where you get your marching orders. Actually, when you gather together, you're to minister to one another, exhort one another, bless one another. We don't, the Bible doesn't say that we are not to miss church because of the fact that God just doesn't want us to miss it. He says you are to what? You are to minister one to another. That's what it's for. As, as the habit of some people get into not going to church. Now we've all been there. We got out of church, thought we could make it. You found out you couldn't, didn't you? I told the pastor when my wife and I walked through the doors this last time we came right through that door. I felt the power of God and we knew we were at home. We knew we were at home. How many of you ever walked in a place and said, I know I'm at home? You better thank God for a place where there's liberty. 
You better thank God where the Spirit of God is, there's liberty. You better thank God for this house where the glory of God can manifest and He lets the Spirit of God do whatever He wants to do. Somebody better shout hallelujah. Because there's a whole lot of places you're not going to get. You're going to go to places where you're not going to receive that. You're going to go there and think, what in the world was this about? you got three points in a poem. Hello. Three points in a poem, that's it, and I'm gone. And I beat everybody to win this. How many of you been in a church like that? Amen. I don't want to be a part of a church like that anymore. I want to be a part of a church where the glory of God is manifested, where we absolutely have the power of God, and we take it to the streets, and we see the miracle working power of God working in our lives. Yeah, but the preacher isn't that for preachers? No, 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 no. It's for everybody, anybody that's filled and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to function in the five-fold ministry. All kinds. Of, did you know Stephen and Philip were deacons? And they became evangelists. And they saw signs and wonders and miracles following their ministry. Because they received the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Some people get so nervous, Pastor, when you talk about, oh, Lord, he's talking about times. It's a good thing, not a bad thing. Yeah, right. Well, I heard it was of the devil. You heard me say that. Well, let me tell you something. Why didn't I speak in tongues when I was out drunk? <laughs> Why didn't I speak in tongues when I was doing drugs? No, 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 no. The baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of tongues is for you and for me that we might be witnesses for the power of evangelism. All you've got to do, we need to do what we need to do. We all need to read the book of Acts real slow over and over. Because we need a book of Acts revival. We need a revival like the book of Acts where everything happened that could happen and nobody was afraid. They were absolutely sure of what they believed. Now look at this. You've got to get back to where I'm at. I'll get off on some bunny trail. Look at this now. So he said, is it a suggestion or a command? Did he say commandment? Yes. Did he say, I command you to wait to be in two? Yes. Now he wasn't trying to be a hard taskmaster to say, you know, I want to command you because I'm in charge and I have authority. He was saying that to them because he knew that what you're getting ready to face, you are going out as wolves in the midst, or sheaves in the midst of wolves. You're going out where you're going to face devils. You're going out where you're going to face disease. And you're going to need this power to be able to deal with it. You're going to have religious leaders that try to crucify you. Hello. There's some religious leaders around there right now. He's already told them they've tried to crucify him. In their own way, they've tried. Oh, Lord, let me tell you something. People, whether you think so or not, get jealous. I pastored a good church. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I, when, when I went through a difficult time, I guarantee you people were voting because they thought, well, I'll pick up some of his people. You know, we'll quiet this Presbyterian church. The truth of the matter is, they do close. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because they want to grow. And, uh, you know, we've, been, we've seen a lot of sheep swap. Mm -hmm. This one goes to this church for a while, they switch over here. Then they switch over to where, wherever God's doing something, they think, and there's a man of God, a new revival hit or something. Then they go over there for a while. How many of you believe it's time we get stabilized? Absolutely just stuck right where we're supposed to be. I mean founded, grounded, unshakable, unmovable in the house of God we belong in. Hallelujah. There are people from the east, west, north, and south right now that are coming back in this house right here that belong in here. You walk. Yes. They're coming back. They're looking for this and looking for that. They're not going to find them. They're going to find what they're looking for right here. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now look at this now. You saw the words command. Now listen to me. Number one benefit of the baptism in the Holy Ghost is power. Everybody say power. power. What kind of power are we talking about? There's two Greek words that are used for power. One is the word dunamis. Some of you have heard it before. It means power that's miraculous in its working. The other one is the word exusion. It's used in John chapter 1 verse 12 where it says, To as many have received him, he gave the power to become the sons of God. Now notice, yes. to become the sons of God. Yes. You are not born a mature son of God. You are born a child of God. You become a son of God. 
That's why you need the five-fold ministry in a local church that you might be taught and trained so that you become a son of God. A mature son. Read Galatians 4. It says, the child, though he be a partaker of the inheritance, cannot partake of it because he still remains a child. He cannot be trusted. How many of you trust your two-year-old with your keys to your car? <laughs> it's not a matter of us being able to trust God. It's whether or not he trusts us. Hello? Can he trust you? My motor's getting warmed up now. Say, power. Power. Now we understand he's given us authority, but through the baptism we receive this miraculous power. So don't tell me you don't need the power if you want to see signs and wonders. That's right. You have dominion and authority to become a son of God, but you need the power of God. Everybody say power. Power. Power evangelism. That's what it's about. Now listen. I want you to look, if you would, at Acts chapter 2, verse 11. You know this verse. Acts chapter 2, verse 11. Or verse 1 through 11. Because I'm going to show you something you might have never seen before that is so powerful because so many people have thought that individuals look at chapter number 2, verse number 1, all the way to verse 11. We're going to read all this and then we're going to, we're going to listen to me. And you know, we lay hands on them. Individuals that need the baptism. We lay hands on the sick, they recover. We lay hands on people who receive the baptism. That's the way they did it in the book of Acts. But it, the, also, there was a time when Peter preached at Cornelius' household yes, who gathered his friends and his family. It says there was a large number that had assembled. And while Peter was in, I don't know about him interrupting my message, but the Holy Ghost interrupted his message. Yeah. He was preaching and the Spirit of God fell on the people yes. while he was a preacher. Was that the only place? No, Paul said something. Wait a minute, listen to me. Paul said, my, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but my speech and my preaching was in demonstration of the power of God that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but the power of God. His words were so full of power that he didn't even have to lay hands on people half the time. How many of you like to see that happen? I just don't know if that can happen. Sure. I'm getting hot, taking the call off. That's what preachers do. They thank you, sir. Look at it with me. Acts chapter 2, verse number 1. When the day of Pentecost was... Well, I'm glad that you tuned in today. This is Pastor Kissel again. I pray that you enjoyed the broadcast today. And if you would, and if you would like to, you could write us here at 4600 North St. Joe Avenue, uh, 47720. Or you could call us here at the church at 436-3733, and that's area code 812. And if we could help you in any way, be of an encouragement to you in any way, just let us know. God richly bless you today. Bye-bye.